There we go. Now we're recording the ambient smile. Yeah, just in case we need to. Because we want that garbage background. truck. Yeah, background noise. There's nothing like uh, the no, starting a sound library for a garbage truck, is let's, there? No, no, no. Let's get our facts right. It was actually a street, street sweeper. sweeper. Street sweeper. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a garbage truck, no. Okay. okay. But we should tell our viewers uh, where we are. You should introduce. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We are here. <laughs> we're here. Are we? We're here. We have arrived. <laughs> we are. Um, well, we, are. <laughs> we are at Good Company Scarborough, and uh, I am here with Frank and Darren. Thing Adventures. Good morning, and uh, this is our next podcast, and we're just going to have a chat about all things, all things Queensland and street sweepers. And street sweepers. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Cue the street sweeper. <laughs> and uh, so we've got some lovely I coffees think, on the way, don't I we, think, Frank? Um, what did you order for us I this morning? We, they're very... Um, he's buying out more dust than he's picking up. Yeah, no, 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 no. They're very <laughs> high on hygiene up here at Scarborough. Yeah, yeah that's right. So I would like to keep things, um, everything ship shape. Yes. Uh, what did I order? Yeah, well, what, what coffees are we getting here, We Frank? have a uh, macchiato over here. Yes. Yeah, we do. Uh, flat white here. Right, yeah. And uh, to my left, we have a, <laughs> um, a decaf flat white on oat milk. Oat milk. Thank you very much. <laughs> What's wrong with oat milk? <laughs> I, hang on, a decaf flat white on oat. You may as well oh, hey, wow. just drink didn't, your water. I didn't know you could milk. It's going to have oat. the same flavour. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Cheers, gentlemen. And uh, we've put Darren in the sunshine over there because he's the oh, uh, shining yeah. light out of the three. Wow. Sure, uh, look, sure Darren, am. Yeah. Well, Darren. Excellent. Um, can I just add, Darren probably needs a bit of vitamin D because he's recovering. I'm, I'm a recovered. Uh, oh, are you? Sufferer of COVID. COVID. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So, Darren, what's uh, what's post COVID? Feel? Well, what was your COVID journey like? Oh, uh, COVID. Um, just for me, it felt like I just had a flu, and uh, no real, you know, bad experience at all. Just I felt tired for a day, and I think I slept. A lot more than I normally do. Yeah, and maybe that helped me um, not have the the side effects um, so severe. But yeah, wow. So, um, is, but I'm confused because is COVID still a thing? <laughs> because. I read somewhere on a government website that the, oh, the, the vaccine <laughs> has, done, conspiracy has here. done its job. So the, the vaccine has done its job. Yes. But then I was. I didn't die. But then no, no. Well, but then I was. <laughs> That's true, Darren. I yeah. was listening to a news report last night, and and numbers have blown up. Yeah. We've yeah. had like seven. Yeah, it has. Thousand new cases yesterday. Yeah, but that's the ones that were reported as well. Correct. You know, so, there could you be know, a lot more than well, that well, actually. Probably. But what I love is when you come down to great coffee shops like this, a good company, and you look at what most people are doing. We're just going about living our lives, which I think is also good. Yeah, getting on with life. So speaking of, I want to come back to <laughs> Good Company for a moment because yes. they've been uh, Jack and the team have been very kind yes. to. Here's your, here's your decaf. Oh, here we go. Yeah, oh, come, come on. on, come on, bring it around this way. Um, this okay, Brooke. Jack and Brooke have been fantastic. So, what's this one, Brooke? Oat decaf. Oat oh, that, that yucky, 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 yucky one. For me. <laughs> it's yeah, for the little been boy over out there. on me on this one. Uh, so, uh, Jack, Brooke, and the team here at Good Company do an amazing job. It's fairly new, three months old coffee shop down in Scarborough, and I think this should be on everybody's uh, drive-by wish list if you're coming up uh, to the north of Brisbane. Absolutely. So, I just want to say to you, gentlemen, cheers. I'll wait for your coffees to yeah, get yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyone with manners would wait for everyone else. These coffees else. are amazing, and don't pay out on my oat milk decaf. I did not. Flat white. I did not. I did not pay out on your... Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, stop it. What are you on about? <laughs> okay, I want to know, how do you get how do you get milk out of oats? I don't know. You milk them. How, do you, milk, how do you milk an... <laughs> There goes our G rating. <laughs> that's, that's like... Uh, it's a G rating. That's like... Go on. That's like... Meet the parents. <laughs> yeah. You can milk Aww. a cat, right? Oh, I don't know. Can you? Okay. <laughs> Maybe we should we should produce one on how to milk yeah, certain. Next okay, podcast, yeah. you bring the almonds and we'll milk them. <laughs> I like oat milk because it is dairy free. And okay. so for people that are allergic to dairy, so it is a it great milk? alternative. Why call it milk then if it's dairy free? Milk doesn't just refer to something from a cow, Frank. No. Yeah, okay. We'll leave it. At okay, so what are you what, what oh. are you what are you proposing that you rename this to oat oh, juice? No, well, oat juice. A, oat liquid. <laughs> oat liquid. So I'll no, I think I'll milk, have a I'll have milk a, is <laughs> I'll have a decaf. I'll have a decaf <laughs> flat white on, on, on oat liquid. liquid. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, did there's did nothing did on. Did it. you leave the car open for any reason? <laughs> I do remember. Traveling. I do remember a, a cliff. 
when we were in the we just doors, we open. Left doors open. Is it, there's probably stuff in the back. So and I, I, I have a, accidentally left the car open, so I'm going to go and oh, shut We can that. see it. I, I don't think you need to go and close it. I think we should reassure the viewers, <laughs> listeners, that we are professional in every sense entity. of the word. Yeah, we, we do are. know what we're doing. We do, which is why we're on time this morning and fully prepared. We just, we've just got Wayne with us, so we, you know we're a little bit challenged in that respect. He's it's our special needs <laughs> child, isn't he? <laughs> oh. Here he comes. Oh, Wayne's back. Well, <laughs> I've so I've got something I want to talk about this morning. Me too. I've got. Oh, actually, I feel well, like. No, in, I feel I need to apologise. Okay, Frank doesn't want to talk about something. Frank wants to gripe about something. No, 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 no. We should. I think we should start every episode apologising for the people (laughs) that we offended in the last episode. Now, I want. I. I I just want to. I just want to. I want to make it clear that um, I don't personally have anything against bicycle riders. Yeah, right. I ride sure. a bicycle myself. Sure. Yeah, so right. it wasn't personal. I wasn't picking a knife. When was the last? In fact, I, I, in, images in fact, of Joe Biden on a yeah, bicycle are coming yeah, to mind yeah. right now. I thought it would be an interesting discussion just to kick this podcast off, seeing as we are in the good company uh, whereabouts here mm-hmm. at this great coffee shop, also uh, opposite the Morton Bay Boat Club, the uh, harbour here. Mm. Morgan uh, Seafood. We're looking at Morgan Seafood. Yeah. We're looking at the harbour. Morgan I Seafood, thought, by the way, are not should... sponsors of this podcast <laughs> in any way, shape or form. However, if they would like to be in the future, we are open to negotiations. Okay. All right. Thanks for that, Frank. I thought it would be a good thing for us to come up with the Thing Adventures Top 10 Things to Do in the Red Cliff area on this peninsula up here. And mm. uh, I'm going to start with number one, good company coffee. Naturally. Yes. Naturally. And it's good. We're enjoying this for the first time this morning. And I've got to say, um, and they've been <laughs> kind enough to let us use their coffee shop as a location today. They but may never let us that, come back, but they've been <laughs> kind this morning. Yeah. But it's great. Yes. Um, but then uh, we also have some friends in the centre of Redcliffe that have some things that we can do. Um, why don't you go and visit Ride Electric? <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh. Macchiato. Oh, there we go. Perfect Thank timing, Brooke. Thank, Thank you very much, Yeah, Brooke. now, you complained about my coffee. Look at this. What's this? It's very white. What's there it, isn't what? anything more plain or simple than just what, you know, what you got there, Frank. But it's a flat white coffee. What? Mate, how, how vanilla is that? I didn't ask for vanilla. Okay. It's a flat white. What are you doing? <laughs> no, it doesn't. I can't smell Darren, any vanilla. Darren just made sure you <laughs> have remnants of COVID in your and coffee this morning. I, oh, yeah. I was thank just you. checking for a hypnol. No, um, I, um, I didn't Number lose my, my taste or smell. That was, you know, one thing that didn't happen to me when I, yeah. when right. I had COVID. Right. I, I remained with full functioning tastes and smells. Me too, when I got COVID. So, I, didn't, um, I didn't suffer that. It's because it's a different variant, Frank. I, I did have that. Is it omni omni something or other that omnivorous? No, no, omni omni carniv- omnivorous. Uh, I, I think we've finished testing the alpha and beta versions of it. I think. <laughs> I think we need a Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Yep. COVID Time. Charlie. We need the Charlie variant. Charlie variant. Yeah. Oh. Actually, no, because there's Delta. So what's after Delta? Oh, what's after the Delta? Echo. Echo. Yeah. Echo's the new. Yeah, we're ready for Echo. Back to let's 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 go through our list of great things to do on oh, the yeah, Red Cliff we're Peninsula. We're up to number two, weren't we? Yeah, right. Electric. Coffee. Now you can rent stuff from them. You can't can you? rent pretty much anything you want that's electric there. Yeah, electric guitar, electric in drums. Fact, no, I mean, no, no, no. In fact, no. I think we that's should not, do. We should do. You a don't ride a guitar from there. That'd be cool. But um, but they do rent um, uh, scooters so that you can ride around. The, the scooter tracks here, like the e-bike, e-scooter yes. trails here, are amazing, There's aren't they? Good, You've done ooh, it. Yeah. Can you ride? Scooters on paths here. Yeah, well, yes, that's How apparently come? where you're supposed to ride scooters but on the footpath, bi- but not on the bike ones. Well, oh, don't come oh. on, Frank's just after another. Now we're getting into <laughs> blurred lines. Sit, I just want to make sure that we're giving the right information because you can't ride scooters everywhere. Well, okay, that's true. true. That's true. Yeah. I, I have in mind actually. I'd Even like to do a petition of this entire area. I'd I'd like to actually go a survey door knocking and 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 see what people really think about where the e scooters should be able to ride because I think they should be able to ride in the bike lanes. We covered that in our last episode, but you know. Anyway, I found out of someone last night in the city of Brisbane, you can ride scooters in the green 
bike well, lanes. N- not yeah, according is that to right? Whoa, no, whoa, no, no, no. Who told you that? That's exactly where I was riding my the scooter that I was on when the police pulled me over. So, what bike lanes can you ride scooters in? The ones that aren't a part of a road. Oh my the ones gosh. that look like a footpath. Okay, so somehow we have landed back at this subject today. <laughs> well, you brought up the second best thing to do in uh, in this area, which is go to ride electric and hire a scooter. Yeah, so, um, well, you know what? That's something we need to ask them about, I reckon. I reckon they would know. Yeah, they would. Be like. Okay, so I've got a question. A guy just rode by on yep. the road yep. on an electric bicycle. Right. What's he pedalling? He was pedaling slightly, but going a lot faster than what he was. Look, it looked like he was pedaling. Because I saw a bike yesterday, and he wasn't pedaling. Oh yeah, he just had a little throttle thing. Little on throttle, it. right, right. So right. But he had di- pedals, right? He had pedals, but they weren't pedaling. So okay. as long as he can use the pedals, it's so, still a bicycle. So if we put pedals on a scooter, does that is that kind oh, of some kind of loophole? We have to do that. Genius. So we'll talk Genius. to our friends Genius at idea. Ride Electric, and we're gonna we're gonna weld. Pedals on. Two pedals. Onto a scooter. Or, or gaff it. Gaff it, yeah. Two pedals to the scooter and then it's a bicycle. All right. So if, you're, like that if you're standing on a scooter, how would you operate the pedals? No, no, no. The pedals obviously don't have to be operated if you saw someone riding down the road without pedaling. and they're Right. So they could be stationary. They don't even have to move. But if there's pedals on there, it's a bike. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. I okay. Frank, one of your favourite things to do in the Redcliffe area. One of the things... I love to do in the Redcliffe area to go and um, stock up on seafood from Morgan's. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, are not sponsors of this podcast in any way, <laughs> shape or form. But if they would like to sponsor us in the future, we are open to negotiations. Excellent. Stock up on seafood <laughs> from Morgan's and go yeah. and find a spot down by the waterfront. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't in it? The park. With a look oh. over the Moreton <clears throat> Bay and the boats. I've got a, I've got a good That's one. That's one of my favourite have I finished my oh, favourite? <laughs> that was my, that's that's right, one, that's one, of my Frank, Frank. one of my favourite things to do. Do you, Yeah. Okay. So Darren's got a good one I'm now. going to hand it over to Darren now because finished? he's got another <laughs> great oh, thing to do. Yeah, Darren, what do, what, what do you like to do, Darren? Number four. Well, I'm just going to talk as slow as Frank does when I talk about this one. No, I'm, not, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, Frank, you don't talk that slow. You need more coffee. You actually talk slower than that. Um, uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to um, I just love it. say, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not going to name names, but I'm going to say one really good thing to do in this area is to get your boat and jet ski license. Yes, um, we which, did that. Which Wayne and I did last year, and um, we had a really good experience, didn't we? It doing was that? amazing. Um, so you go through a day of, or like half a day of classes. You have yep, to do, half a day. you have to pre study all the marine rules. Um, it's not too di- actually the one thing that's interesting about the rules is you've got to think American because everything it's like you drive on the right when yeah. it's in the water not on the left like yeah. we do in Australia so the international standard is on the right <laughs> but yeah we did half a day classes yep. and then we did practical on an actual boat so you go out and you have to test all your skills mm. and then we did a personal watercraft uh, license yes. as well yep. And uh, so that was the Australian Boating School. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That we did that with. Um, but it was also from up here at the, um, you know, here, I think it's the Moreton Bay Boat, Boat Club, Club or yeah. somewhere near here. Um, yeah. We can almost see the water from where we're sitting. So, um, yeah, that was good. That was great. Okay. So, number five uh, <coughs> thing that you really must do um, for me is the flour and chocolate at uh, Redcliffe. Ooh. Um, so, when you go to the Redcliffe yeah, main strip and the market, who are not sponsors there. of this podcast <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. But, but if they would like to be, be in the future, we are open to negotiations. <laughs> it has got to be one of the greatest pastry places. Darren hooked us up with this uh, not too long ago. Yeah. Well, I live I live near the one at Morningside and. And which is, um, I think, the newer, the newer um, establishment out of both of those ones. But then I realised there was one here at Redcliffe, and um, so I took the boys for brekkie one morning. Oh, it was Coffee. amazing! The pastry, everything's fresh every morning. Uh, French pastries yeah. there. It's pretty incredible. Mm. I actually think it's one of the standout uh, bakeries uh, on the Redcliffe Peninsula. So, um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, number six, Frank. Oh, I've got to come up with another one, even though I don't live here. <laughs> well, actually, what I do like to do, Wayne, is I have found myself up here um, in the mornings occasionally. Yep. So I will go down to where the jetty is 
couple of kilometres down the road. Now, what area is Which that? Which one? Is that the the Red Cliff Jetty or the Woody Point Jetty? The Red Cliff Jetty, Wayne. Yep. So I'll go and get myself a coffee and a croissant or a toasted sanger. <laughs> Where does your croissant uh, come from, Frank? Well, they're French croissants. Now, a toasted sanger, would everyone know what a toasted sanger was? We better explain that for our United States viewers. Yes. A toasted sanger. Talk us through... First of all, what is a sanger, Frank? A sanger would be slang for a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for our American friends, if you want to be super Australian, you want to learn that uh, that word, sanger. Now, you would spell sanger how, Darren? S-A-N-G-A. There you go, sanger. Say it with us, sanger. Sanger. <laughs> sanger. All right, Frank, toasted sanger and uh, what? Silent. Toasted sanger and a coffee and go and sit out. Out oh, on the jetty. What are you, what's in your sanger? What are you toasting Ooh, in there? Oh, well, Tell look, us. for me, I like to keep it simple, ham and cheese. Oh. Any kind of sauce, like a tomato sauce or a no, barbecue sauce? I like, no, 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 no. I, I, like um, I don't like to overshadow the taste of the fresh ham and the melted cheese. You can put a little bit of mustard on that if you like. Oh, I have yeah. had one with a... Some um, some mustard or some relish on it, if you so desire. But I like just to keep it plain and just go sit out there by myself, gather my thoughts, and just um, watch the sunrise That's or nice. sunset, depending on what time of day you want to really go there. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Great spot. One of my favourite things to do um, is on a weekend. You have to time this with low tide, um, but otherwise you could drown. <laughs> <laughs> you will drown. But if you come up to the Redcliffe Peninsula, when you, you'll come over a long bridge. Uh, when you come over uh, into Redcliffe, it is the Horton Highway Bridge. When you are coming back, it is the Ted Smout Memorial Bridge. There you go. Anyway, that massive bridge, all that water around you that you see actually in low tide disappears and it goes to sand and you can go and walk out there with Where the, does it go? It evaporates. It, yeah, it goes into the ocean, Frank. Don't you know science? <laughs> I was just... Um, but there's asking a couple the of little. Maybe one of our viewers may have been asking the question. <laughs> there's a couple of little um, channels there, so you can actually take your fishing rod and just cast into a very narrow channel, and that sort of increases your chances, I mm. think, of a good oh, the, catch. The narrow channel where the boats go. Correct. Yeah. So you cast your line in there. <laughs> Hopefully, you catch a boat. <laughs> yeah, if you, you might. catch a boat, you just get to clarify. Um, but there's. Um, it really is an amazing experience because um, you're just walking <laughs> on fresh. You know, fresh sand and and uh, there's crabs and all sorts of things Ooh, to find there. It's crabs. a great thing to do. You're walking on crabs, <laughs> and if you time it right, <laughs> if you if you time it right, you won't have to tread water. If you time it right, <clears throat> you could take you could take a deck chair or two out there and uh, really, you know, bottle of wine, just sit out there and yeah. just enjoy nature. It's spectacular. There's an idea. So that's the, uh, we'll call, what are we going to call that? We're just going to call that River Walk. North Pine River. So we'll call that the North Pine River experience. So that's something awesome to do. That's not the North Pine River, is well, it? Well, it's the mouth yeah, it of it. leads into the North yeah, Pine River. Is that right? It's yeah. the mouth of the North Pine River. I'm just, I'm just fact-checking that, there Frank. There you go. It is, uh, yeah, so Brighton Park, Decker Park, North okay. Pine River. It's amazing. All right. Absolutely now amazing. You can also, yes. I'll, make, I'll make this number, what are we up to, seven or eight? I, think I thought that was 10. That was definitely 10. Because um, I got some things to rant oh. about. <laughs> Even so, fishing <laughs> off that bridge yeah. um, or from Woody Point, they've got a lot of great facilities. And also at the Red Cliff Jetty, um, they've mm. got everything there you need to clean, scale, oh, yeah, good. Uh, you name it. Which is mm -hmm. pretty, which is pretty good. I even noticed this morning on my uh, journey across the bridge that they even have pelicans there. Yes. Yeah. Ready to try and they do steal ready your to fish. Steal, ready steal to steal your, your catch. Steal your yeah, yeah. <laughs> your bait, your fish, the fruit your of catch. your labour. Yeah, that's it. Number oh. eight, <laughs> number eight, Frank. <laughs> Are we only up to number eight? I think we're only up to number eight. I uh, forget. Could okay. be nine. Well, look down Redcliffe, down near where the jetty is at Redcliffe and Flower and Chocolate. There is a um, tourist attraction called the Bee Gees Walk. What are What are the Bee Gees doing in Redcliffe? Now they weren't. That's that, a good question. Didn't they live here? I think they lived here when they mm, were kids kid. and they started out, but they weren't born in Redcliffe. I don't think they were born. No. Okay. So it says here, the Bee Gees produced hit after hit in a career spanning over four decades and over 200 million sold albums. Right. And uh, so the Morton Bay Regional Council unveiled a 70-metre monument 
that connects Redcliffe Parade and yes. Sutton Street, yes. which is right down in the heart of yeah, uh, the Redcliffe. Redcliffe area, and they've renamed it BG's Way. So we still don't know why. This is why. Tell us. After emigrating from Manchester, England, yes. they came to Redcliffe, Queensland in the late 1950s. Wow. The brother, Barry, has often said Redcliffe was paradise <laughs> in 1958 and it still is today. So I would agree with that. Hold on, did we get to 10? I, don't I think, think we, we did. Nah. Top 10 BG's things. It'd have to be 9 and 10. <laughs> Okay, so top nine things to do in in Redcliffe. It's got to mm. be one more. Okay. How about we get How about we get people to to comment <coughs> yes. down below on what okay. okay. is your favourite thing to do in the Redcliffe area? Yeah, let's and we'll 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 come back. We'll come back to it next podcast. We'll come back and we'll give you number ten, judged by you at home. Can I rant about something now? Yeah, okay. okay Dude, go for we've been trying okay. to delay this rant for so long. and uh, No, look, I have right, been... Go, I, rant I, away. I have been so ticked off of late yep. by some motorists. And I'm, I'm, oh. I'm assuming, I'm assuming, because I cannot be the only one that experiences this, two things that tick me off to no end. Okay. From go, other Frank. Mo- other what, motor- what is it? Okay. Give us number Tell one. Us. Merging. Merging. Onto the M1 or a freeway from an on-ramp. All right? Yes. Okay. So, yep. You're merging onto the freeway. The freeway's 100 kilometres an hour. Correct. Okay? Yep. Yep. Lights, red light, bottom of the ramp, light turns green. So, cars in front of me are driving up the on-ramp. Yep. And, and what speed are they doing? Oh, they're doing like it's somewhere between well, 70 and 80. No. They should be no, speeding up to 100. No. No, one would think so, Wayne, because that would be the sensible thing to do. That's so, what you're supposed to do. So when you get to the point where the ramp merges onto the freeway lanes, you're going the same speed so you can simply merge in. You're not holding up cars. Yeah. But no, no. Let's stick to 60 kilometres an hour all the way up the ramp until we get to the freeway and then we cause some poor sap to hit the skids to let us in, then will speed up. Um, <laughs> How does that make any sense whatsoever? So can I can I just make an observation, Frank? I don't I'm, I'd like I'm you to make 100% an observation. I'm 100% with you on this. Like, I, like okay, you. so at the moment, my daughter uh, is 80 hours into her 100 hours of, you know, of, of learner driving um, yeah. lessons yeah. Uh, and experience. And so, you know, I talked to her about... Um, you know, when when you're merging, you want to be merging at the same speed as the as the uh, lanes that you're merging into. Yeah. Um, now, uh, let's take one specific merge uh, or on ramp, for example. Yes. The one Please. at Mount Gravatt. Like, you, just say we're heading into to, into the city, into the city, into okay. Brisbane City. Yes, yes. From Mount Gravatt, uh, from down near Garden City. Clump Road. Clump Road. Yeah. Very so, familiar with that on ramp. Yeah. So am I. I'm very familiar with that on ramp. Now <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is it is a 60 zone, real up until really close to the actual merge. You so check I've it never, out next I've time. I've never there. seen those 60 zone signs. Um, well, you're not looking, are you? <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm getting frustrated with <laughs> the cars in front of me. <laughs> It's called Have merging, an not piling up. <laughs> um, so I, I briefly... Right, Frank, that's a, this is a good issue. I brief, This is another thing that kind of goes along with that. Yeah. Hey, it's the lorikeets uh, yeah, chiming lovely. in. We've got a lot of lorikeets here today. Um, luckily, we put up an effects microphone to, to, uh, <laughs> to get that. Um, excellent. Yeah, so... Um, so my... <laughs> Uh, yesterday, I was just reading, and I briefly just skimmed over it because I didn't have time to read the whole thing. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, someone mm-hmm, had come mm-hmm. out and said, maybe it was a uh, someone who studied traffic and thing, like if if we gave enough space to the person in front and gave and had enough and there's equal space to the person behind us, there'd be virtually no congestion. Because if you think about, and he he related it to how a flock of birds fly. Mm. They're, they're equally spaced, yeah. and so they don't bunch up ever, like an accordion kind of yeah. thing. Um, and that that way, because if you think about what causes it um, congestion, is people probably getting too close, Ooh, putting on the brakes, yeah. and then everyone behind them puts on the brakes. You've just brought up my second peeve. Okay. And so if I'm everyone's got enough space, yeah. no one's no one's pu- putting their foot down on the yeah. brakes. Yeah. To stop suddenly, yeah. There, there goes your, there goes your congestion. Yeah. Well, look, all right, Frank, give us that number two. That leads into number two. Number so, two. I am a very good 
and cautious driver. Most of the time. Did, did that we, is, no, no, no. Do we need to remind everyone at home that, you know, Frank is a professional, professional driver. driver. A professional mm. driver. So I like to give enough space between me and the car in front. Yeah, I agree. That's I agree. common sense. Yep. Common sense. allows you. It does allow you. It allows you to react. To react. And give you enough time to react safely. So every time, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm saying every time. You've never I, exaggerated, Frank? I never exaggerate. Every time I leave enough space between me and the car in front, guess what happens? Oh, I know what's oh. going to happen here. What's going to happen? Well, what I would do if I was someone else is I would pull in front of you in the space that you've created between the car in front I and think, yourself. So I, now what do I have to do? I think you haven't talked to a truck driver, Frank, because, I mean, that's their <laughs> that's their daily so now, struggle. You know? So having said that, what do I have to do now? Well, I think most motorists, Frank, to be – What do just, I have to do now? No, I want to play devil's advocate here. What you have done by leaving that lovely safe distance between you and the car in front is you have thrown out a welcome mat to say, hey, pull in front of me. Well, And that's look, exactly nah, what people do. There is no welcome mat there because they see my headlights and hear my horn going. There is no <laughs> welcome mat. <laughs> oh, dear. So um, what oh. am I forced to do once someone... Someone Slow down it. and leave the gap again. Well, you, have to, you have to, to create another, another safe gap. So then what happens? Another person slots okay. in. So before this I know it, I'm still back at home. <laughs> I haven't even left home Why yet. Have you even left? <laughs> You're in <laughs> reverse. <laughs> you haven't even got out of the driveway. Oh, my gosh. Oh. You're in reverse. Oh. So you know the drive to the su- uh, from the Sunshine Coast back down to Brisbane? No. Um, you must know it. Never done it. it. So there's this stretch of road somewhere between Butterham and Brisbane, let's say, but where they've got these chevrons, oh, and yeah, where they that say one. keep yeah. two chevrons, chevrons apart, behind, yeah. Yeah. that's got to be 100 metres. There's, Probably there's a, more. It's Probably a, more. It's a yeah. long distance. And I'm yeah. like, so when you, I've tried it, when you keep the two chevron distance, so, oh, yeah, totally. so for our, um, I, I think everyone knows, it's a chevron is the shape of a, a V, and they paint it in Australia, they oh, paint no. it on the road, and they try to teach you how to keep a safe distance. And so there's these chevrons, and I would say they're about every, what, 50 metres or 30 metres, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. feels like a yeah. maybe maybe 30 metres. And they they say a safe distance is two chevrons. Well, that two chevrons is enough for a B-double oh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. pull in front of you. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, I've, yeah. I've found that I'm trying to keep the two chevron thing and you get irritated um, point one of a Chevron motorist oh, sitting on your tail yeah, trying that. to tell you, you to get up. You just brought number three. <laughs> oh, people sitting oh, in the right lane when they're not passing God. anyone. Oh, yeah. No, but I was but oh. I was overtaking, but I was overtaking with a two Chevron distance between me and the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> now, do oh, I do that now? Oh, no, dear. because it's it's. I think the two Chevron thing is just... No one knows how to drive. Well, See? It's a little bit crazy. See? Anyway, but, but sorry, peep number three. I think... There was this whole someone sitting on my. I hate that. Oh, I thought you were going to call it a right lane bandit. You know, the people that hog the right lane. Oh, uh, yeah, they do. Too. Yeah, but what? Okay. So h- help me understand this. Yep. Yeah. If you're doing the speed limit, can you sit in the right lane? No. no. Not no. if you're overtaking. On a, on a road that says keep left unless overtaking. Okay, it doesn't say keep left unless overtaking. No, no, no. Oh, no I think I, I'm pretty sure the law is on any double lane road, if you're doing 80 or more, then it's illegal to sit in the right lane if you're not overtaking Correct. Someone. All right. Correct. Okay. That's my so, understanding of the law. And, right. and if you are in the right lane and there's nothing, you are what we would call a right lane bandit. Okay. Right lane bandit. So I'm in the right lane. Yes. Speed limit's 110 kilometres an hour on the M1 going down the Gold Coast. Correct. Yeah. Yep. I'm in the right lane. Right. Doing 110 kilometres. In fact, I set my cruise. I may be doing 113. Ooh. Okay. All but right. on your car, but there's also this tolerance. So you're right. probably actually doing 110. So I can't sit in that lane unless I'm overtaking. Correct. Correct. But if I want to take over, overtake anyone else, then I've got to go. you got to break those limits. I've got to break the speed, speed limit. limit. No, but that's no. why you should be in the left lane. Yeah, but they're going slow. Yeah, but here's, here's what I think it is, because we're really talking about one or two kilometres an hour difference, right? So another motorist who might be comfortable doing 114, um, you know, if you're right lane banditing at 113, he, they may want to... They have no right. If I'm sitting there doing the speed limit at 110 and they want to do 114, well, they're breaking the law. But does the sign say keep left unless overtaking? I haven't seen 
Are there signs? Because I you, haven't seen them. And are you overtaken? If you're not overtaken, I think go in the left. Wow. Well, yeah, and then let them get the ticket. I think there's uh, there's room for discussion <laughs> <laughs> regarding those points. This is a good one. This is actually that's a good I, one. I sometimes I just shake my head because again, and I come back to the. Um, the merge that we were talking about before. Like, I've seen a car behind me as I'm merging on to the M1. Yes. Uh, at, at, at the... Yes. At the... Cl- what, we're Clump at, Road. Clump Road uh, merge. Entry, yep. So, a car behind me, there's there's absolute... And this was, like, at a time where there was no traffic on the M1. Com- basically speeds up onto the merge. So, that's mm-hmm. fine. But just heads directly to the right lane. Yep. There's four lanes there, no other cars in it. Directly <laughs> oh. straight over to the right hand lane. I'm like, okay, that's a that's a right lane bandit. I don't understand the logic okay. there. It's RL like, RLB. Yeah, I don't get it. I'd, yeah, I don't. Okay, know. now I've got I've got something I want to throw up because we've we've driven throw across the outback. Throw bring up. I want to bring it up, up, but I want to throw it up on the board. Okay, throw it up on the. Where, where's the board today? It's a proverbial imaginary oh, it's, board. It's an a imaginary virtual, virtual, virtual board. Yeah. Yep. So when we're in outback Queensland, virtual means it's not I actually, really there. I, I really think um, at the. Uh, I, I think we need to. I think we need to get some comments down below what people think. When you get out to places like Longreach, Winton, and beyond, all the way up to the Queensland Northern Territory border, uh, proper outback Queensland. I think our speed limit should match that of Northern Territory and we should pop them up to 130 kilometres an hour because you're just wasting time. You're just sitting out there. There's no one on these roads for hundreds of kilometres and uh, there's no um, there's no there's no threat. And if it's good enough for the Northern Territory, why isn't it good enough for Queensland? Let's help our um, let's help tourists. Let's help farmers. Let's um, help people get so where they need to get. A couple of faster. questions. Yeah. Because I've never driven in the Northern Territory before. So oh, it's can, fun. You can confirm that the <laughs> out on those open stretches of road. Yes. Uh, they're 130 kilometres an hour. Absolutely, I did what it last year. What are the year. road conditions like compared they are spectacular. to? Spectacular. So they're very good conditions. They like, are very good. Northern Territory is very good roads. The However, roads are in good I would condition. still say. Uh, they're in impeccable condition. And are condition. we talking like long stretches <laughs> of straight road here? Uh, we are talking about long yeah, I th- stretches I think of straight road. I think that's probably why. <laughs> no, but there are long stretches of straight road in outback Queensland. Yeah, with lots of kangaroos Any and wildlife. Oh, okay, so on that. No, I'm I, just trying to say, like, there's probably a reason why we can do 130 kilometres an hour in Northern Territory, but not in Queensland. Uh, there's kangaroos in Northern Territory. Yeah. So here's what I would say. If you wanted to get technical about it, you have a daylight 130 kilometre an hour limit, and oh, yeah. then you drop it back down to 110 or 100 for night time, because no one's going to speed at night time yeah. if you want to keep your car in one piece. So when, yeah. when is the changeover time then? Dusk. Or just as we, we have a headlight rule, right, that is um, 20 minutes before... Uh, before up until before sunrise, you've got to have headlights on to 20 minutes and 20 minutes after sunset. So you know, if you uh, had sunset. that rule in place, you'd have to be looking at your phone to work out and Google when sunset was and then work 20 minutes back. No, I, I would I say... I think you if could tell got, by looking when sunset is... No, I would say if you have to use headlights, that's when you would know that it's time to change. Mm, I use I headlights say. in my garage. Okay, so forget <laughs> the whole thing. Just 130 kilometres an hour for outback Queensland. That's no. what I'm proposing, okay. and I'd like to hear what our viewers oh, have I to say we on just that make issue. It like the autobahns in Germany. Yeah. Well, even yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. Just do whatever you want. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Now we're talking. Let's see what the road toll says after that. We want to say a big thanks yes, to we, Jack and Brooke and the whole yes, team here do. at Good Company in Scarborough. And uh, we'd encourage any of you, uh, if you're up in this area, come and pop by these guys. They're you open from 6.30 yet. or 7 what every morning. What are you waiting for? And uh, you can find them on Google. Easy to find, but an absolutely gorgeous location right here on the waterfront uh, up on the north side of um, the Red Cliff Peninsula in Scarborough. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful. Which is great. Anyway, so on that note, we will catch you next time. Sensational. Excellent. Okay. Bye. Bye for now.